Welcome to Top 10 Archive. When you're on death row, you certainly must think frequently about how your last moments will go. Will you be able to say something profound so you're remembered forever? Or will you just go in silence, taking with you the sins that got you where you are? For these death row inmates, their final moments were likely not how they pictured them. Be it a malfunction in the equipment or an incorrect dosage of a lethal cocktail, these 10 deaths were met with some serious kinks, giving us the top 10 botched executions. Number 10, John Lewis Evans III. The execution of John Lewis Evans didn't bode well for capital punishment supporters. The robber turned murderer was the first execution in the state of Alabama since the reinstatement of the death penalty in 1976. Seven years after reintroducing capital punishment, Evans' execution proved to be a prime example cited by opposers after the inmate died in what is considered a rather torturous manner. Evans was strapped to the electric chair nicknamed Yellow Mama, which was well over 50 years old and had been out of commission since 1965. The execution of Evans took 14 minutes and three separate jarring jolts from the device. Between 8.30 and 8.44 p.m., the inmate charred from each jolt, the stench of his burning flesh and clothing nauseating surveyors. Despite pleas from Evans' attorney for clemency due to the lengthy and painful electrocution, the switch was flipped a third time, finally killing Evans, whose fist had been permanently clenched since the first jolt of 1900 volts. Number 9. George Painter after being convicted of murdering fellow housemate and lover, George Painter was sentenced to death in June of 1892. The proposed method of execution was hanging, and at 7.45 a.m. on January 26, 1894, the act was carried out. With the noose tied tight around his neck, the trapdoor released beneath Painter, plummeting him to the ground below. Before he could be killed by strangulation, the rope snapped and Painter's body fell to the floor. Though Painter's neck was broken and blood poured from a wound on his head, the inmate was still alive and his body was prepped for another drop through the trap door. This time, the rope remained intact and Painter was left to hang in front of spectators for four minutes before his lifeless body was cut down, his blood-soaked gown causing a general queasiness over the crowd. Number 8. Angel Diaz Lethal injection was the method used on this Puerto Rican death row inmate who faced execution after being convicted in the shooting of a strip club manager in 1979. This seemingly painless method of execution is supposed to only last approximately seven and a half minutes, but something delayed Angel's death an extra 43 minutes. Initially, a liver condition was cited for the prolonged death, but it was later revealed that the administering needle pierced through the vein, allowing the drugs to enter into Angel's tissue rather than his bloodstream. Angel's body was being slowly poisoned as the drug cycled through his tissue until enough of it finally reached his organs. It is believed that Diaz felt no pain through the process, though his family still considers it a botched execution. Number 7. Rommel Broom Broom is what many would consider the worst kind of criminal, having been convicted of raping and killing a 14-year-old girl. So there's likely to be no sympathy for this botched execution. Making matters worse is the fact that Broom's execution was never actually completed, which was first administered in September of 2009. The process of Broom's lethal injection proved to be agonizing for the inmate as those administering the needle had difficulties finding a vein that would not collapse. Several attempts were made to find a vein. Most met with Broom screaming out in extreme pain. At different points, Broom claims the needle struck a bone in his foot and a muscle. Broom's execution was halted and, as of May 2015, he still sits on death row waiting to pay for his heinous crime. Number 6. Jingao Lorsongunen At the time of her execution in 1979, Jingao repeatedly claimed her innocence, but it was to no avail. Her involvement in the death of a young boy, despite the truth behind the situation, had doomed her, and on January 13th in Thailand, her sentence was carried out. Jingao was strapped up to a cross, a white screen rolled in front of her to indicate the position of her heart. The gunman stepped into place, Jingao still struggling against her restraints. Ten shots were fired into her body and, 
As expected, she was confirmed dead. Jingawa started to show signs of life in the morgue, despite the doctor's indication that she had no pulse or retina activity. Despite blood profusely flowing from the holes in her chest from the shots, Jingawa survived, and it wasn't until she was strapped back to the cross and shot another 15 times did she finally die. Jingawa's blood was everywhere, a nauseating sight for anyone, but mostly for the guards that had to handle her still living body. Number 5. Clayton Lockett The death of 19-year-old Stephanie Neiman in 1999 was what put Lockett in prison and made him a member of Oklahoma's death row. During his execution, done via lethal injection, Lockett survived 16 pricks and 43 minutes after the first dose of execution drug was administered, and those minutes were filled with panic and anxiety from the administering doctors and unnerving moans and groans from the inmate. After convulsions post-administration of the drug, it was determined that Lockett's artery was hit rather than a vein. Blood dripped from Lockett, causing a bloody mess. Lockett started to moan as his head jerked, leaving witnesses to assume the drug wasn't working as Lockett seemed to try to talk. At 6.56 p.m., the execution was officially called off, allowing Lockett to slowly die. Number 4. Lady Margaret Pole the Countess of Salisbury was once an ally in the eyes of King Henry VIII until her son, Reginald Pole, published Pro Ecclesiastica Unitatis Defensioni, a document that very brazenly spoke out against the king. For her son's words, Margaret Pole and her family would be sentenced to death. Though the Countess was in her late 60s, an age considered old for the time, she was imprisoned as a traitor until her scheduled execution. Two different accounts of her execution are told, both telling of a beheading that didn't go so well. The first account tells of an axeman who was still green in his trade. He struck her 11 times, once in the shoulder, before he was finally able to behead her. The second account, the blame is on Margaret, who is said to have tried to run from her fate. Regardless, it was a messy execution that took longer than it should have. Number three, Jimmy Lee Gray. The grotesque and seriously depraved acts of Jimmy Lee Gray landed him in a Mississippi gas chamber in 1983. Rightfully so, Gray paid for his crimes, but his execution was far from clean. Despite regulations required as such, Gray's head was not strapped to the vertical metal bar behind his chair, so when the gas started to leak into the room, Gray thrashed about. His head slammed into the restraining bar repeatedly, and he emitted 11 moans before finally losing consciousness. The scene was gruesome enough for the room to be cleared before Gray could finally succumb to the gases he was breathing in. Number 2. Brian Steckel 29-year-old Sandra Lee Long received her justice when, on November 4, 2005, her rapist and murderer Brian David Steckel was injected with a deadly dose during his execution. Lethal injection starts with a sedative drug so the inmate doesn't feel the fiery effects of the potassium chloride as it is injected into their veins, but Steckel's execution was done without the sedative. After the injection machine malfunctioned and officials switched the inmate to a working one, they still neglected to give Steckel the paralytic and sedative. As Steckel was not paralyzed or sedated prior to the chloride being administered, his body started to convulse, likely a reaction to the extreme pain he felt as the chloride coursed through his veins. While Steckel waited the 12 minutes for the procedure to be completed, he spoke very apologetically to his witnesses the entire time. Number 1. Tom Ketchum It's not unheard of for the rope to snap during execution by hanging, sending the convicted's body plummeting to the ground below but it may be a little more rare for the individual's body to sever completely from their head. In the case of outlaw Tom Ketchum or Blackjack, this is precisely what happened. The executioner in charge of the hanging had apparently miscalculated the length of the drop needed to snap Ketchum's neck, allowing seven feet between the platform and the ground. When Blackjack was released, his body fell the full seven feet. The momentum of the drop and the sudden snap of the rope decapitating him completely. Spectators were privy to a bloody show as his headless body spurted blood continuously. Ketchum's head was then sewn back on for a proper funeral. 